this restaurant right next to the hotel, but then comes back and says, oh, but wait, I have so many customers, I can build on top of the restaurant and have some more rooms and make more money. So, and then he says, oh boy, but these people need to park. So he adds on a parking garage and puts more rooms on top of the parking garage. And then eventually says, oh, I can even make more money by building a shopping center. And builds a shopping center and puts more rooms on top of the, the shopping center. So this becomes interesting. And then he's a little odd in the, his way. So he has some rules that he developed. And, uh, he says the lowest possible must use the first. Actually, when the people come in, he has some strange rules. So he says, uh, well, when the people come in, we've got to start filling up the rooms in order from the bottom up. So that's off bar. So uh, we can say that the, the fire marshal who uh, developed this, or the fire inspector, came up with this rule. There can only be one person in the room until all the rooms in that level are filled up. All right, so that means that when customers come in, he puts people in the room, for example, in the same level. Here's a one level, uh, like the P. Uh, he puts one person here, okay, and we're going to represent it one person here, and then one person here, and then eventually comes back and fills in uh, the rest of the people, or the rest of the electron people. All right, his other rule is that no more than two people to a room, period. Cannot happen. So no more than two people to a room, and he keeps that for his entire hotel. And that is, that goes with Pauli exclusion theory. But in addition, he doesn't only want two people in the room, only, but they have to have opposite political views. Okay? Opposite spins, opposite political views. They don't want he don't want them to recover. But it's a little different. Okay, so this is, uh, this is, these two are Pauli exclusion principles. All right, so this is how it's filling up. And there it is, filling up. One person in the level, another person in the level. There you go. And I put them to represent the arrows because that's what we're eventually going to use. All right, so how many orbitals in electrons? So hold on to that analogy because it's going to help you to develop the uh, electron configuration in the classroom uh, tomorrow. So how many orbitals are in each one of these? So remember, the sublevels are S, P, D, F, and we said that there were there was one box only for the S. Okay, there's three boxes for the P, and there are five boxes. Okay, I kind of short here. Okay, five boxes for the D, and seven boxes. Two. So keep in mind, how, so how many electrons can we have in the S? All right, I'm going to put it over here. In each room, we can have two people. So two electrons. So there it is, two electrons. This sublevel, sublevel P, has three orbitals. In each orbital, we can put two electrons. And it's going to go one, two, three, and then four, five, and six. And therefore, we're going to have a maximum of six electrons. And then in the five orbitals of the D, we can have a total of 10 electrons. You follow the logic here now, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. And then in this one, seven orbitals, you can have 14 electrons. All right, and one more thing. How do you tell the total number of electrons in an energy level? So if in energy level 1, 1 has only the s orbital, 2 has s and p, 3 has s, p, and d, and 4 has s, p, d, and f. 
So we can count, we know that in energy level S, we can put a maximum of two electrons. So two for every S, two for every S. In the P, there's three orbitals, therefore six electrons. I'm gonna put a maximum of six electrons in every P, and I'm gonna represent it as a superscript. And I'm going to be able to put 10 electrons in the D because there are five orbitals, so 10 electrons, and a total of 14 electrons in the F. So if I total these, total the number of electrons, 14 plus 10 plus 6 plus 2, that gives me um, 32. Lo and behold, it gives you 32 electrons in the orbital. Here, it gives you 18 electrons. Here, it gives you 8 electrons and 2 electrons. So now, the only thing left to do is tomorrow, we're going to color the periodic table just like this. So I'd like you to make a little notation. I want you to kind of make a, a diagram of the periodic table, just so you know that this is the S block. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven levels. And later on, we're going to put, uh, this is, would be the, this is two, and this is one level, and this is three level, and here, oops, it went away, oops, okay. But we're going to color these tomorrow in class, and you will see how all this fits together, and you will be able to write electron configurations just perfectly. All right. See you in class.